Good afternoon, Madam Toastmaster, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests. This speech today, as you heard, is kind of different. It's divided up into three different parts, a little bit different from what I'm used to doing. The first part, I'm going to be telling you guys about the effective salesperson and the qualities you need to be a successful salesperson in order to be the mindset behind the buyer. After that, you're going to get to see the sales process in action through a live role play demonstration. And after that, we're going to just kind of have an informal discussion and talk about what you just saw. All right, so the first part, the qualities of a successful salesperson. Because you see, life is all sales. Even if you're not a salesperson, you still sell every day. So the better you can get at sales, the better you will be at life. It's a tall order, huh? All right, so there's five qualities that make a successful salesperson. The first one is that they focus on the buyer. You see, sales is about helping people. Don't think about how you're going to make money. Think about how you're going to help this person satisfy their need. And you're really going to come from a place of contribution and help them out. And in that way, you're not only going to help them, but you help yourself because you'll make money as well. So it's a win-win situation for both of you guys. The second thing is that you, got, that you have to listen well. You have to possess good listening skills. A good salesperson asks questions, listens to the responses, so you can match them up with the right product for them. The next thing that they do is they create value for the buyer. You see, you don't just want to sell them how you're going to satisfy their needs. You want to show them how you're going to go above and beyond what they expect. And that's actually part of your value proposition, because when you show them that, they can see why they need to work with you instead of with your competitor. The next thing you want to do is radiate credibility. See, a salesperson is very credible. They want to know that you're the expert in your field. Even if you have no idea what you're talking about, when they come to talk to you, you need to, they need to feel like you know what you're talking about and you can help them out. Now, the last thing, the fifth thing, that if you want to be bofo in sales, <laughs> you have to have a positive attitude. Because in this business, you'll hear the word no a lot more than you're going to hear yes. So in those times, you got to lift up your head, keep a positive attitude, and push through all the no's to get to the yeses. Okay, so now you guys know five things if you want to be a good salesperson. But the next thing you need to know about is what's going on in the mind, in that person's brain of your customer when they walk into the store. You need to know the the process that people go through when buying something. Because whether it's unconsciously or consciously, we all go through the same things. So you see, I was driving in my car the other day. I ran through a yellow light like that one. When a thought hit me, like a car just running into me, although it didn't hit me, a thought hit me like that. And I thought, I need to get a book on sales. And that's the first step in the buying process, need identification. I had a need a book and I had wasn't satisfied. I had no book. So you know what I did? I searched for fulfillment. That's the second process. I drove a couple yellow lights later. I was in the parking lot of Barnes and Noble. I walked inside my favorite store to my favorite aisle, the sales section, and I perused all the sales books where in the third process where I evaluate the alternatives. I looked at all the books until a black one caught my eye, the sales Bible. I opened it up how to sell anything to everyone, anytime, for any price. So I open it up, flip through it, sniffed it, it smells good, the book is good, that's how you know. <laughs> Gotta pass the smell test. And then, I made a decision, and that's the fourth step in the buying process. Make a decision. I evaluated all my alternatives, and I chose the book, and I bought it. Now I just need to read it, but that's a different thing. Okay, so that's part one of this. The sales process and what you need to, the five qualities need to be successful and what's going on in your buyer's head. So this part is going to be the role play. Before I introduce my partner, I'm going to tell you the, what I'm going to do as part of the persuasive process of my role play. I'm going to do three things to try and be super persuasive and get my dude to buy something. First is I want to establish rapport because people like doing business from people that they like with people that they like. Next thing I'm going to do is ask questions. 
so I can see, match them up with the right product. And the last thing I'm going to do is ask for commitment, which is where you make the sale. All right, so without further ado, let me welcome up Jeffrey. Woo! Okay, so in this role play, I am the owner of a store, the flamboyant, very energetic guy. My name is Caesar Velasquez Cilantro. I hail from a distant land, and I'm the owner of a clown suit store called Funny Business. And my customer here, Jeffrey, is coming in to buy a clown suit. The thing is, just a disclaimer, we have not rehearsed this, so I don't know what he's going to say, and he definitely has no idea what I'm going to say. All right, so let's go. Welcome to the store, Jeffrey. Very nice to meet you. My right name here. is Cesar Velasquez Cilantro. You may call me CBS. CBS. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. So, Sounds like a pharmacy. It does. I get that. I have no idea why people say that. I don't know why I say it. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for coming into my clown suit store. I'm sure we have everything from noses and giant shoes to fit your needs. Now tell me, Jeff, what brings you into the store today? Well, I lost my job, and I'm looking for a job, and I'm going through the one ads, and there was one ad for a clown. And I've never done that before, and I thought, maybe I should wear a clown suit and go in to, uh, to this interview and wear the clown suit. So I what a fine idea, Jeff. I always tell my customers they should always come into interviews wearing a clown suit. <laughs> Nothing like getting your boss to laugh to get him to hire you, you know what I mean? Well, I'm sure you're excited. Are you, are you excited about entering into the clown business? I'm a little nervous because I've never done that before. Oh, you will be just fine, thank you. It's going to be amazing because I started 25 years ago, had a blast, never looked back. So, let's get you into your clown suit. What type are you looking for? Well, it just, it didn't say a whole lot, it just said, a clown's needed. And um, I don't even know if, it's a, if, if it has anything to do with the circus. I mean, may, maybe they just call everybody who works there a clown. <laughs> of course, you are a clown, but you must dress as a clown as well. Now, we have three selections. We have our backyard children's party selection. We have our scary clown for Halloween, and we have our professional grade for Cirque du Soleil. Which one did you see the most? Could we put together something with a little of each? A little of each. Because I don't know what kind of clown they're looking for. You yeah. want the Vivalt, the oh. secret one. Oh, right. Let me introduce you to our secret line. Oh, yeah. Another problem is I'm in between jobs and I don't have very much money. Of course. <laughs> I will get you the cheapest one that combines everything. Luckily, wow. there's only one of those in the store. Wow. I right. know. Once it I know. So, this one. It's very simple, has a scary wig, big shoes for backyard parties, wow. and it's very skin tight like people in Cirque du Soleil wear. Mm -hmm. Does that look like something that would fit your needs? Yeah. Let's give it a try. Awesome, awesome. Now, while you're in the store, is How much is it, first of all? Yeah. How much is it? Well, <laughs> the professional grade clown suits are normally around 300 but this one, this one I told you is a cheaper one, it's just $99.95. Uh, well, <laughs> Could I rent it and bring it back? Would you be if interested in our layaway program? You pay half now, and after you get the job, you pay the other half afterwards. But can I take it with me? Take uh, it, of course, you get yeah, to take yeah. it with you on a layaway program. This is my interview is tomorrow. Yes, yes. You have it now. You pay half now. You take the clown suit now. You pay half later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that sound good for you? Sounds good. Awesome. Well, uh, since I'm just going to rent it for two days, can I have it? You know what? I will give you the friends and family 1% discount. Wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Jeffrey, so very ready. much. All right. Thank you for coming We're to the store. All right, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. All right, so that was the role play. We didn't rehearse that at all, if you can tell. Um, so he gave me a bit of a challenge, but I just want to ask you guys. What sort of techniques could you see happening in our role play besides being really goofy and selling clown suits? <laughs> yes. Turned on the charm. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. I was, I was in the beginning, I didn't want to go straight into trying to get you to buy something. I was trying to build rapport and ask you about your job, see what's going on. So 
Hopefully I did an okay job of, of doing that. Does anybody else see something else that was happening between us? You closed the deal at the end. Yes, yeah. Did that. And I think, I'm not sure if I asked you if you wanted to buy anything else. I see you were, you were trying to save money, so I didn't do that. But usually I would, yeah. Every, every time we offer something to him, because whatever he asks, we mm -hmm. offer something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have some cheaper offer, something like that. Right, right. I don't have like just one line line. I have you lots of options. That. Yeah, good thing I have a lot of inventory in my store. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is there anything else that anyone noticed, or is that? I thought it was interesting. Um, I'm super anti. I hate buying things from people who are selling. Uh -huh. And I thought it was really interesting that you know you talked about the three uh, pieces, and that connection to commitment was so fluid. Like I was like, oh no, now we're talking about buying something, and I don't even know how we got there. Yeah. So I thought that was so really that was just good. really streamlined, yeah. really easy. Yeah, you would have sold me something probably. Awesome. Well, <laughs> you're welcome in my store anytime. <laughs> I like the way you were open to possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, in other words, uh, you didn't steer me away from what I wanted to something that you provided. Mm -hmm. You were willing to, to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so being open was awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys very much. That is the end of that. Uh, Madam Toastmaster.